Hello, we hope you're doing well. Welcome back to a very exciting episode of CSK News. A lot happening in today's episode. As always, all the stories will be timestamped down below. Let's hop into our first one, though, all about rumors, according to Rush B Podcast out there, about the future SK Gaming project, and it could be on the line as of this American Minor happening this past weekend. If you guys are aware of, of course, the face it major in September, the American Minor is going to be sending two teams there, and that will end in just three days' time. But one of the teams who is no longer actually there and has been eliminated and actually sent home was the now Tem Como roster, arguably one of the favorite teams there alongside NRG. To actually make the major qualifier because the top two teams of the eight teams there will actually go through the major qualifier. They'll get stickers. They'll be a part of the major as it is. And it does seem, according to rumors out there, according to Rush B Podcast a couple days ago, if they did fail to beat Swole Patrol in a best of three, they might have been dropped by SK Gaming. Now, although they actually did beat Swole Patrol in that, they later that day actually lost to E United in a best of three. And it's actually E United who sent them home. And E United is actually going on to playoffs. While now Tom Como is now out of the running for the major at face a major in September. So this is actually big. Big news, of course, I'm sure you guys are well aware of the struggles this now Tem Como roster has actually been facing over the course of the past three to four months with no major victories, a lot of internal, I guess you could say, turmoil on that team. And if you've actually watched them play, they've certainly been struggling. So it does seem to pull into question, will SK Gaming still want to sign these guys as to other Brazilian rosters out there? Or will SK Gaming just not have a roster for the time being? Because these guys have showed no promise thus far. And yes, they're not going to the face at major. And it does seem very likely SK Gaming has drawn a big question as if they're going to actually sign now Tem Como or not. And also in very big and obvious news out there, Panorama UI has been officially released. I did not make a video yesterday when it was actually first released, but I am so excited to see the future of CSGO and what better timing. Ironically enough, it was actually CSGO dev who tweeted out things like this. They said once Neymar was done being so busy with the World Cup, they'd actually release the Panorama UI. And ironically enough, it was the same day Brazil did get eliminated from the World Cup. So CSGO dev obviously having this and plan to release at least in the past few days. And eventually it was Brazil eliminated and it worked out all together, guys. We actually got Panorama UI. If you guys don't know how to launch it right now, I'm sure many of you guys have already figured that out. It does look amazing. It has its small glitches and, and stuff and bugs so far that will be worked out over the next few months. But all you have to do is go to Steam, go to your games, go to Counter-Strike Global Offensive, right-click, go to Properties, go to Launch Options, and then, of course, do Dash Panorama. And the game is now officially out of beta, or so we think so far. And, of course, there's going to be a lot of glitches out there in terms of scoreboard and, and smaller features out there. But it's really exciting to see a whole new dashboard, a whole new play style happening for CSGO. And now with competitive and map, that kind of matchmaking now available, we can actually see if the FPS drops or the FPS boosts are actually going to be a, a thing with this new drop. So, uh, of course, with the new release, we thought the Panorama was going to bring a lot of FPS boost to the gameplay. We couldn't test it out in beta because you couldn't play against uh, anyone on online matches. So it's going to be cool to see if it actually does boost your FPS. If you guys are experiencing that kind of stuff, feel free to comment down below. How do you guys like Panorama UI? What do you suggest in the future changes for it? But as of right now, it definitely looks very cool and I cannot wait for its future. And hopefully uh, we all can actually get used to it very fast. And also in very big news, where our community feedback really does matter now more than ever, for the Face It Major, we actually have for the Miners, all four Miners so far. Uh, alongside that, we actually have Face announcing they're going to be using Twitch and YouTube for streaming platforms for the Miner system so far. So of course, the American Miner going on, European Miner, CIS Miner, Asia Miner to follow. It does seem for those four events, it will be broadcasted on Twitch and YouTube, but as of right now, they have yet to announce what the Major itself, the Major Qualifier and the Major event itself on the Grand Stage will be actually broadcasted on. Of course, you guys are probably well aware as well. We have actually ESL signing with Facebook for the past two seasons of Pro League as well as the next two on top of that. So it's going to be kind of sad to see what's going to happen here if they do sell out to Facebook. Of course, community feedback is, is pretty obvious right now. Not really exactly liking Facebook. ESL is not hiding their standpoint at all as we actually had ESL come out in a statement with HLTV and actually got to clarify, they see the responses as well. They see the struggles of the Facebook stream so far. Although they also made note to mention though the potential of this in the future is still there. So it's very, very likely as well, we could have the Face It Major and the Major Qualifier still stuck on Facebook, but for now, the Miners will be broadcasted on both Twitch and YouTube. So for all of you guys who are back to those viewing platforms, congratulations. I myself have actually been doing that lately. I've just been going to HLTV and actually watching the matches directly on HLTV. That way, I don't have any interface problems with the whole Facebook live stream. Although, the one thing I do miss is seeing the chat kind of blow up uh, at certain moments in the games. But either way, what do you guys think about this? ESL for now is going to stick it out with Twitch and YouTube for the Miners, but for the Major Qualifier and the Major, they have yet to decide. And and uh, will money make them decide even further? 
it's possible. And before we get into the big news, that's not supposed to be ironic whatsoever. We have to actually ask the questions about FaZe Clan and their future. Now, of course, there's been much speculation as to what the future of that roster will be. They've come forward several times and said, yes, they are looking for a permanent replacement for Olaf Meister on that roster. Now, I actually tried to talk about what's actually wrong with Olaf Meister last week. We decided against that on the show here. So if you guys do want to know details, unfortunately enough, I cannot share the exact details with you because they are quite personal with his issue. But it does seem he's going to be off this FaZe Clan roster for the prolonged future. And they're still looking to replace place him permanently and I don't know if Chroman's going to be that fit. The big question throughout the event because FaZe Clan still doing quite well obviously one of the consistently top five teams in the world but did Chroman actually earn his spot on the roster is the big question. You guys can feel free to leave your feedback down below and I'm probably going to have the unpopular opinion here and actually say no. I don't think he actually earned his spot here and although you guys can see his ace clutch as well against Big which actually gave them a shot to actually retake the series and he was very clutch in some moments. He's still very obviously statistically not only probably the worst player on that roster which is not meant to be a downgrade at all. These are obviously probably uh, consistently, I said earlier, top five, obviously probably a top three team in the world pretty much the entire year so far. It's a great team and all five members so far have been performing very well. To be the worst player on FaZe Clan is certainly not uh, in, in light a bad thing. It probably puts you at still the top 5% of all pro players out there, but statistically speaking, he's probably the worst player on the roster and he's definitely the most inconsistent looking at his results. Although he did have some really good maps throughout ESL Cologne, did he actually earn that consistency? I'm not really sure if it's going to be a great fit for the future and it does see it doesn't seem like FaZe Clan is actually going towards that direction now I could be wrong they could sign him tomorrow as a permanent member but I really do not think so and given the fact that he's only actually had a year and actually playing against this top tier talent you look at his history he's only been playing CSGO for about three years and only one year with Heroic and FaZe Clan has actually been against top tier talent and even with his time with Heroic it was really not spending around these teams that were actually at ESL Cologne and so that's where we're seeing these statistical inconsistencies with his gameplay but given the right amount of time this guy could of course be a very stellar player out there in the CSGO scene and this is all the more experience for him but will he actually be a permanent member on FaZe Clan? Leave a comment down below what you guys think. My opinion is going to be for now it's going to be no. And speaking of FaZe Clan they might have at ESL Cologne actually blown one of their last chances to come away with the ESL Grand Slam. If you guys are not aware of the ESL Grand Slam a $1 million prize pool going directly to the players if they do manage to win four events four of the premier events for ESL or DreamHack throughout the entire year. Now also a very crucial rule as I show you guys the leaderboard on screen is FaZe Clan is in the lead currently with three victories but every 10 events your earliest victory is actually taken away from you so this is actually prevents out there they want consistent teams who can actually win an event or win several events out of every 10 events to win the overall grand slam and this actually can make the competition go a little bit prolonged and hopefully into 2019 as well because every 10 events your earliest victory is taken away from you and phase clan one of their victories is actually exactly nine events ago which means their next esl or dreamhack premier event if they do not manage to win the entire thing their total victories will go from three back to two now of course you need four victories to actually come away with a million dollar prize pool and this could be a big reset of course they still have no fifth permanent member and so if they do not win their next event guys we're going to see a big reset here and they will go from three victories down to two and the ESL Grand Slam will continue so of course going to be a heated run probably going to go into 2019 face kind of really your only team right now to actually have a shot at that million dollar prize pool so we'll see if they can come away with it and really best of luck if they can and they've definitely been struggling these past few months trying to find a player who can fit that role and very last in today's episode of CSK News obviously what we want to talk about most of all is ESL so Cologne happening this past weekend. Probably one of the most fun tournaments I have seen in a very, very long time. So to get you guys up on what happened early on in the actual event itself, we actually had JW with his first tweet out there, kind of targeting and asking around if anyone knew who, where the Big Bad Wolf was. Now, why this is actually out there and why he tweeted this out exactly was actually last weekend at ECS Finals, or actually early June in ECS Finals, it was Team Liquid and Taka who took down Fnatic in a best of three series and actually dominated them, and it was actually Taka who had this clip in an interview. Uh, it's hard to stay humble when you are the bad wolf, right? Uh, you don't see the bad wolf afraid of the little pig, so... Uh... So when Liquid fell early on in the tournament, they actually lost to Team Big, which is very notable because, of course, Smuya said he was going to bang the heck out of Liquid, and they, they did so in that best of one. So kind of a small series there. Then Liquid went on to lose to North as well. And that, just like that, within the first day, they were actually gone. And that's why JW tweeted that back out, actually, of course, making subtle jabs there. Now, Fnatic only made it to the playoffs. They eventually fell to FaZe Clan and kind of a, a dominant flash there. It was a best of three, but both of the FaZe Clan's win were actually very one-sided. On top of that, kind of some big upsets out there. Mouse Sports, their newest member being 
Canadian Snacks. They failed to make playoffs as well. And on top of that, some big news. Of course, many of you guys are actually North American viewers. For the first time in about eight months, ever since December of last year, we actually had no North American teams and no North American players actually make it to the playoffs throughout this tournament at ESO Cologne. So very disappointing there. Um, kind of sad to see the progression there. But of course, Cloud9 had their new stand-in members. So uh, you really can't argue too much about that. And Liquid did fall short in their results. But still disappointing for North America, none the least. Uh, nonetheless, but still a really big tournament, in fact, for a team out there, which I'm sure you guys know of. And that is Team Big, who quite possibly made this the most entertaining event I've seen in a long time. To give you guys a quick rundown as well, they beat Liquid. They go on to beat, in best of three series, though, they beat Renegades. They beat MeBR, G2, FaZe. That's four, I guess, minus Renegades. But still, those last three there, G2, MeBR, and FaZe Clan, in best of three, those are all victories on a big stage out there, proving themselves to be a very, very good team, especially when they have a home crowd out there. And again, a really good team going forward for the major in just a couple of months these guys were very consistent it was actually very hard to name an MVP of this entire roster if I had to it'd probably be next but any of these players Tizian having great maps Gabi having very clutch moments the entire pretty much the entire roster at one point in time carried the team throughout a match so it was really cool to see in the actual finals of course after those string of victories there they met Navi in the finals and first off in the semifinals it was just crazy to see the first place big actually take down FaZe Clan FaZe Clan a heavy favorite going into that and of course even if you even argue even a bigger surprise it was actually Navi taking down the, the ESL Cologne favor in Astralis. So both the teams in the finals coming off very hype victories and it was just crazy to see. So of course going into this one we had Navi coming off big victories over at Star Series as well as the Asian Championships but you could argue the teams they saw there were not the top tier talent. We actually have Astralis was not there. I don't think uh, Mouse Sports was there. So a lot of top teams were actually not at that at, at the Star Series or at least at the Asian Championships. Asian Championships only eight teams so you could expect them to be a favorite of those events. So Navi coming off big victories but still at ESO Clone coming into contact with some teams they have not played a lot in the past and then we're for big this is a big stage for them the biggest tournament they participated in in quite some time ever since their old roster at the major which made for a very very hyped up finals and it was amazing to watch and to keep it short obviously it was Navi who took the finals there three to one but in a best of five series you really find the depth of these map pools and these guys not being together for too long of time of course the addition of Smooth to that roster somewhat new still so of course in the future they're going to figure out their map pool maybe get a bit more in depth when we have these best of five series you have a roster like Navi who's been together uh, you know Zeus going back and forth between Gambit but they've been together a lot longer uh, than this big roster as well you kind of expect them to come away with the victory and it was a three to one finish Navi looking absolutely dominant and I'm just really excited to see as well we have a Navi who now three times in a row three tournaments in a row have actually made the playoffs curse go away and actually come away with the grand title so Navi looking very very good and well on track for the major uh, but big nonetheless looking really good on stage and really having some great experience here as well going forward some hype around this team and overall it's just amazing to see not only the home crowd but just a, a great overall viewership experience besides the the whole Facebook stream thing uh, just an overall really fun tournament to watch it got me hyped up really really excited to see some more CSGO in the future and I hope you guys all enjoyed today's episode of CSGO News if you guys did feel free to leave a comment down below what were your favorite CSGO moment of the weekend I will see you all sometime soon with more CSGO News and of course some future announcements coming very soon so hope you all enjoy my name is Jake Malik you and I'll see you all very soon goodbye guys